Welcome back to Good Crypto X. In this video, we are going to explore how to launch your DCA bot on Good Crypto X. First, choose the DCA setup form on the Good Crypto X trading page. Then select the coin you want to trade. Let's pick AIXBD for example, as well as the coin you're spending, for instance, USDC. Your coin balances can be found right under their tickers. Since I spend USDC to get AIXBD, my PL will be in USDC. Next, we have three settings presets. You can use these setups right away or rely on them to just quickly fill the settings fields with certain numbers and then modify them according to your specific needs. All you need is to click on the presets name and all the fields will get filled with some basic parameters. The prime preset is designed for relatively established and stable coins with relatively low volatility, typically within the top 300 coins by market cap. The Deegan is a more aggressive setup for meme coins, covering a much larger price range and offering higher profit potential. Finally, the Vault Mode is the most conservative setup, best suited for relatively stable coins like BTC, Ethereum, or Solana. However, we do not recommend using these setups blindly. Instead, use them as a foundation for creating your own setup. Customize it according to the specific token's volatility your risk attitude, and the market situation. After selecting the coins you want to trade, the next step is to define how the bot will open its initial position. For this, you need to select the entry order size and choose the order type it will use. There are three order types available to use here. Swap will enter the market right away. Basically, it's a market order. Limit order will be placed at a set distance below the market price. If I set it at 5%, the entry order will be placed 5% below the current market price. If the bot is set to repeat itself after taking profit, the next entry order will be placed 5% below the price your take profit will execute at. Finally, you have the trailing order. If you set the trailing distance at 10%, the bot will initially place the order trigger 10% above the current market price. If the market price continues to fall as the current chart suggests, the trigger will go down with the market price while maintaining the 10% distance above it. Trailing entry order ensures that you don't enter the market while it keeps going down, but will enter when the fall reverses and the market starts going up. Let's change the distance to 5% to change the scale a bit. So, if the market continues falling, it will keep at 5% above it. But whenever the market turns around and rises, that's exactly when the bot is going to enter the position. Once you've set up our entry order, you will need to set the averaging or safety orders. Here, you will need to determine how far down the price range you want the bot to place additional orders. To do so, you will want to look at the bigger picture on the chart. For this example, let's place 10 orders with a 10% price step, meaning an additional order will be placed every time the price falls by 10%. You can see that the distance is seemingly decreasing, but this impression is actually misleading. The distance between the orders follows a logarithmic scale, with each new averaging order set at 10% lower than the previous. The absolute or USDC distance gets smaller with each order, and that's what you eyeball on the chart, but it is always 10% from previous. Now that you've defined the price step of the averaging orders, you also need to define the price step multiple of those averaging orders. The price step multiple of 1 means that the distance between each subsequent averaging order will be the same as between the previous ones and will be equal to the price step. So if the price step is 10% and the price step multiple is 1, there will be 10% between each averaging order. However, if it's greater than 1, the distance between the orders will increase, and if it's smaller than 1, the distance will decrease. Let me switch the price step to 1%, so it will be easier to see. Now we have 1% between each order, and if we increase the price step multiple to over 1, you can see that the distance between the orders is increasing. While the distance between the entry and the first averaging order is 1%, the distance to the second averaging order is 1.2%, to the third, 1.44%, and so forth. If the price step multiple is less than 1, then the distance to each subsequent averaging order will be decreasing. Let me go back to the price step of 10% and the price step multiple of 1. Now we have 10% between each averaging order, and if we make the price step multiple less than 1, say 0 
you can see that the distance is clearly decreasing. So that's the price step multiple. Now we need to define the size multiple for these averaging orders. Size multiple defines the size of each averaging order relative to the previous one. If you set the multiple at 1, the size of each order will be equal to the previous one. In this case, we have 10 averaging orders that will all have the same size as the entry order. However, if we set the size multiple at 2, each subsequent order will be 2 times larger in size than the previous. So if the entry order is 1 AIXBT, the next order will be 2 AIXBT, the following order will be 4, then 8, and so on. Higher size multiple helps you average down the price of your position more efficiently, but it also entails higher risks as your position size quickly increases. Next is the take profit order. The take profit percentage defines the distance above your average position price at which your sell order is triggered. In this case, it will be placed 5% above the average price of my position. Note that currently it's calculated from the entry order because no averaging orders have been triggered yet, but once they execute, the take profit will be adjusted accordingly to always stay at the 5% distance from your average position with the size equal to your position. There are two options for the take profit order type swap or trailing. With swap selected, once the target level is reached, the order will execute immediately. With the trailing take profit at 5% with a 2.5% trailing distance, when the price reaches the 5% take profit target, the order will not execute, but will start trailing or following the price at a 2.5% distance below it, and if the price continues rising, your take profit will move higher with the market, potentially capturing additional upside. Next up is an optional stop loss order, but in most cases, you will likely want to use it. The stop loss is pretty straightforward, but there is an important detail. The percentage you set for stop loss is the distance from the last averaging order, not from your entry price. As you can see on the chart, the stop loss is set relative to the last averaging order. So, if you place stop loss at 5%, it will be placed 5% below this order. If the stop loss is reached, your total loss will be much higher than 5%. Now let's move on to repeat settings. If you turn it completely off, the bot will stop after hitting either take profit or stop loss. If you want your bot to repeat itself after it reaches take profit, turn the TP option on and the bot will repeat with exactly the same settings after taking profit. If you turn both TP and SL options on, the bot will repeat whenever it hits either take profit or stop loss. You can also specify a cooldown, the time that the bot will wait after hitting the take profit or stop loss before starting the next cycle. Next is the close position feature that allows you to automatically close the position if the bot stops for some unexpected reason, such as insufficient funds or if you stop it manually. In most cases, we recommend keeping this option enabled to ensure that if anything goes wrong, the bot will try to close the position. The funds needed field shows you the amount of funds you need to run this bot. Essentially, it is the total sum of my entry order and all the averaging orders. In this case, 173 USDC is required to run this DCA bot, while my balance is only 83 USDC. TO decrease the amount of funds needed, I can choose a lower averaging order size multiple. I can decrease it to 1.5 or 1.7, and now I have enough funds to run the bot. Once I click Launch DCA, Good Crypto X will calculate the potential route using the largest possible order size to make sure that the route can be constructed and that I will have enough funds. If there aren't enough funds to cover all the averaging orders, when you click on the Launch DCA, it will warn you, you might not have enough funds to execute all of them, but you can try to launch it anyway if you plan to add more funds later. That's all for the second part of our DEX DCA bot overview. In the next part, we will analyze a live bot in action, reviewing its performance analytics and available options. If you have any questions about our DCA bot, don't hesitate to ask us in the Telegram chat. See you in the next, final part.